Similar to last week, it didn't feel right to post another travel vlog or something this week while the whole of the UK is still in mourning. Last week we posted a full tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth and spoke about our thoughts and feelings as Americans living in England while all of this is happening. But between then and now, we had the opportunity to go to London. And since we were in London, we had to go see what was going on. The stuff we'd really only seen on the news. and. We know that there are tons of people, including our American audience, that would like to go or visit, but can't. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to take our own perspective on it and have something that isn't so news-oriented and broadcaster-like. Yeah, like a bit personal. Yeah. Um, and the day that we went was, was actually the day that she had arrived from Scotland, uh, just a few hours prior. We also wanted to visit Westminster, but unfortunately we didn't have the time. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the public transportation, at least in that area, was shut down or only accepting people into the area, mm -hmm. not out. So uh, we did have to walk quite a ways to the next station to make it back to our train. We did, however, make it to Buckingham Palace, and we have been there, I don't even know how many times. Uh, it, we really like the building. Um, we think it's beautiful, and it's obviously a big tourist destination, so we always take friends and family when they come to visit. But I've never seen Buckingham Palace like this. It was barrier set up and set walking paths you had to go through, and then there was tons of guards and uh, they're like, definitely prepping. Yeah, for royal all of forces it. were all like practicing in a courtyard, and there was police everywhere. News stations. They're all getting set up for when she arrives and the ceremonies following. Mm -hmm. And normally you can just kind of walk freely through the area, you know, as freely as you can by not getting hit by cars and stuff, but not, no, not that day. It was, you could go one direction and you just followed it around. And there was, we went on like a random Tuesday at two o'clock and it was packed with people already. Yeah, and honestly, I think that's the most packed I've seen it since we've been here for the past three years. Mm -hmm. We'll go on the weekends or However, peak tour season. yeah, peak tourist season, and it was nothing, it was like, nothing like that. They shut down the fountain. They they did the whole thing, and you had to go in a orderly fashion. You only had so much time in front of the gates, and mm -hmm. you had to move on. Yeah, and this was still very early in the week too. I know that things have gotten a million times crazier since then, but it's not just London that looks like this. All over the UK, there are different memorial sites that are set up where people can go and pay their respects. I know that Windsor has a spot where flowers can be laid outside of Cambridge Gate. Edinburgh has places outside of the Palace of Hollywood House. And it seems like just about every till and bus sign and any type really of just like shops too that had electric screens you know, yeah facing. If, there, if there's a screen it's been switched to images of yeah. the late queen uh, as well as you know you go online and there's condolences like yeah even youtube has a little thing put up yeah. like um and there's also memorials all over the world um some examples include like in durban south africa there's a sand sculpture on the beach in wellington new zealand there was a gun salute uh, a minute of silence was held at Melbourne Cricket Ground in Australia. Flags being flown at half mass in Sri Lanka and just worldwide vigils mm -hmm. are being held around the clock. Yeah, and uh, I was speaking to, well, really briefly when we were in London, was speaking with somebody that was in the park and they had said that it reminded them a lot of when Princess Diana passed away in the late 90s. And I looked online and they said that at the time there were 60 million flowers that were laid in front of Buckingham Palace, even though there was only 47 million people living in the UK, which is absolutely wild. And it wouldn't surprise me if there are well more than that already put up. However, things are much different. Last time everything was laid in front of Buckingham Palace and with this memorial, they've got everything set up in Green Park. Yeah, there's so, signs that say, like, don't, yeah, don't and, leave them tributes here mm -hmm. and bring these, follow the signs to that area. And, and I was, there was, all, you know, there like signs that say, like, flower tribute this way. And I was kind of expecting, you know, some flowers set up. And I had never seen the images from when Princess Diana passed away. That happened when I was about two years old. So it wasn't, like, super on my radar. Um, but this time, well, I had no 
idea what it was gonna look like. It absolutely blew me away. I kept telling Jordan, like, I can't believe this. Yeah, you just wanna stay there and continue to look at all the flowers and all the little tributes and handwritten notes from pretty much all over the world. Mm -hmm. I've seen some stuff from Hong Kong, from Greece, Spain, the US, uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, and seeing all these little notes of people from schools or places she'd visited and making references to Paddington. And yeah, there were, I saw a marmalade sandwich and I just saw a news article too that said, please don't bring this anymore because it's <laughs> attracting wildlife. But um, yeah, there was a bunch of really creative stuff, neat flower patterns that people had laid out and it was just jam packed with people and you could buy flowers there from what I could see too, like if you hadn't brought your own. And I know that they're struggling to get as many flowers here as people want to be able to have access to so that way they could go and pay their respects. And it was just, it was mind boggling to me. And I know that this is happening at least in some regard all over the world too. So it was, it felt very special and very powerful to be a part of it in at least some small little regard. Now the big thing that's happening is the queue, which began shortly after she had arrived. She came into London uh, later in the evening on Tuesday and the queue began Wednesday and it has been 24 hour long queue, stretching about 10 miles long, which is about 178 football pitches. It's just insane. And speaking of football pitches, David Beckham was spotted just the other day queuing up uh, he said he joined the queue about 2 a.m. and had been queuing for, oh, 10 hours, I think wow. is what it's going to. Um, the queue tends to open and close as well. Um, some estimated times are about 16 hours. Uh, they're, I don't know how people are doing it, I think, standing for that long, especially as the UK starts to get colder here with mm -hmm. some of the temps hitting about 8 degrees Celsius or 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I it's a little too chilly know, for me. Yeah, and I know some people have uh, gotten into some medical problems from fainting or just standing for too long, hurting knees and backs. And Oh, I can imagine. It's like you see news footage of what it looks like, just like an aerial shot, and it just keeps going. It's, yeah, it's mad respect to the people that are out there right now. Um, and I know that there's a lot of rules too. So like if you do go and join the queue or for the people that are there, from what I can tell, uh, you can bring a small bag, but if you do so, you have to go and drop it off at the bag drop area. And then people are describing it similar to like airport security, like they're getting searched before they go in. You can't bring anything with you, like any refreshments, um, any flowers or candles or cards. You can't bring any of that. They don't want things getting all cluttered up before the funeral. Uh, and then I guess there's wristbands that they're handing out to people that you can leave the queue for a short period of time to get a refreshment, use the, the latrine and then come back. But aside from that, it's a lot of standing. And when you get there, the coffin is closed and it's on a platform with the Royal Standard flag draped over it. And there's live feed, so you can go on right now and you can see what's happening, which is crazy. We were just glanced at it a second ago and there's like 12,000 people watching at any given point in time. And I'm sure that number is gonna exponentially grow by the time that Monday comes around. And once Monday does come around, about 6.30, the queue will shut off. I don't know if that means they're gonna be nice and tell people that are already queuing, hey, from this point on, we expect you not to make it or they're just gonna turn everyone Oh, could away. you imagine waiting for 20 hours and then you still don't make it yeah, in? Yeah, uh, that would be... A little disheartening. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they're planning ahead for that. Right now, they're estimating though that 750,000 people will have gone through the queue by the time it closes at 6.30 on Monday. That's mind boggling. And from that point on, uh, Monday will be the funeral and the UK has declared it a bank holiday. So people have the opportunity to pay their respects and a lot of businesses will be closed during that time. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like, you know, the common folk like us that are going to be able to watch the funeral. I know that a thousand handwritten invitations were sent out to the heads of state in 
basically every country of the world and there's already confirmed attendees from the president of the u.s and france germany italy and like a hundred more they're estimating about 500 guests are going to be attending the funeral in person from about 200 different countries and territories i mean to say that this thing is a big deal is the understatement of the century. I think part of that, what this video is about, is trying to explain from an American perspective of like just trying to grasp how incredible this is and see it impact everybody and all the all the tributes that being paid and the people standing in line and the people coming to visit and it's so heartwarming, honestly, to see how many different people are coming together. Like no matter how you feel about the monarchy, Queen Elizabeth was worldwide beloved and it's i don't know it's it's very nice to see everybody come together to pay their respects and say goodbye to somebody that like we're never going to see somebody like her again we hope this video gave you a less news like more personal feel of what london is like this week and, and it's only going to get crazier and there's going to be more things involved as the funeral begins Monday. Mm -hmm. And we'll be part of the millions that tune in to watch the funeral live at 11 a.m. And we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming next week. So we thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, if you did end up joining the queue at some point and you did go in, we want to hear from you like what that was like. I wish we could make it. but So with that, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.